Stay out the Bible. The Bible is not your book. The Quran is his book. Stick to your book and find what you need in your book. Whatever the Bible said, whatever I need is in my book, right? It's in a book. So I go to the book, which God gave us, our Father gave us, and I find the things I need. I don't need to go to the Quran and find the things I need because that's not my book. My book is the Biblios, is the Bible. God is good. Amen. Come on, my brother. Woe to the foolish prophet that follows seducing spirits. Uh -huh. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 1 through 3. Then this message came to me from the Lord, son of man, prophesy against the false prophets of Israel who are inventing their own prophecies. Say to them, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits the false prophets who are following their own imaginations and have seen nothing at all. They have seen what? Nothing at all. They have seen what? Nothing at all. What sorrow awaits the false prophets, Mr. Farrakhan, who are following their own imagination. They will say, well, you wasn't there. It doesn't matter. If it wasn't the spirit of God, it's your imagination. Period. And have seen nothing at all. Mystery of deception. They got there's a thing called a lying spirit. False prophecy. Come on, my brother. Ready to see the tape? This is Mr. Farrakhan. Uh, 1985 vision. Press conference. That you record everything I say, that it may bear a record either for or against. Against. You and me. It is written in the book of Ezekiel, when I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness nor from his wicked way he shall die in his iniquity but you have delivered your soul it is in this spirit that i make this announcement in a tiny town in mexico called tepuzlan there is a mountain on top of which is the ruins of a temple dedicated to Quetzalcoatl, the Christ figure of Central and South America. A mountain which I've climbed several times. However, on the night of September the 17th, 1985, I was carried up on that mountain in a vision with a few friends of mine. As we reached the top of the mountain, a wheel or what you call an unidentified flying object appeared at the side of the mountain and I was called from the wheel to come up into the wheel. Three metal legs appeared from the wheel giving me the impression that it was going to land but it never came over the mountain. Being somewhat afraid, I called to the members of my party to come with me, but a voice from the wheel spoke saying, not them, just you. I was told to relax and a beam of light came from the wheel and I was carried up on this beam of light into the wheel. I sat next to the pilot, however I could not see him, I could only feel his presence. As the wheel lifted off from the side of the mountain, Moving at a terrific speed, I knew I was being transported to the mother wheel or the mother plane, which is a human built planet a half a mile by a half a mile, which the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us of for over 60 years. The pilot, knowing that I was fearful of seeing this great mechanical object in the sky, maneuvered his craft in such a way that I would not see the mother plane 
and then backed quickly into it and docked in a tunnel. I was escorted by the pilot to a door and admitted into a room. I shall not bother you with a description of the room, but suffice it to say that at the center of the ceiling was a speaker, and through this speaker, I heard the voice of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad speaking to me as clearly as you hear my voice this morning. He spoke in short, cryptic sentences, and as he spoke, a scroll full of cursive writing rolled down in front of my eyes, but it was a projection of what was being written in my mind. Hallelujah. 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 Warning. Somebody say warning. Warning. For evil, wicked men. You see, Farrakhan did something wrong. He used the scripture that's going to identify him as being a wicked man. Spreading hatred. Speaking things to offend others. Amen? teaching racism. God don't, God don't like that. So for him to use Ezekiel, that's a bad, bad, bad place to go. But because he was talking about the wheel, he had to use Ezekiel. So now, this is what I'm going to say about what Mr. Farrakhan said about Ezekiel. Come on, my brother. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 17 to verse 21. Warning for evil, wicked men. You got it, my brother? You don't have it? You get it for me, please. Yeah. See, Ezekiel was called to be a watchman unto the house of Israel. God did not give Ezekiel a vision or a dream in a spaceship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? Amen. God never gave Ezekiel a vision or a dream or any of his prophet into a spaceship mm -hmm. and show my motherland. When God gives something, it's holy, it's true, and it's right. There's no demonic overtone to it. Amen? You have it? Come on, read it for me. Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 17. To verse 21. To verse 21. Yes, Son of man. Son of man. I have made thee a watchman. I have house. made you, Ezekiel, a watchman. You were talking to Ezekiel. A watchman. Come on. Unto the house of Israel. Unto the, see, you don't like the Jews. So why would you go to Ezekiel? That don't make any sense. I don't know if that's good English, but that's, that's okay. You see, Ezekiel was sent to Israel. He was a prophet unto Israel. They don't like the Jews. The nation of Israel don't like the Jews. They call them pigs. So why would you use Ezekiel, who was sent to amplify your sci-fi vision? Come on, read my brother. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When he said, God is telling Ezekiel this. He didn't take him a little spaceship. Come on. When I say unto the wicked, I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. Uh, what? And thou givest him not warning. You don't give him warning? No. Okay. Nor speakest to warn the wicked from uh -huh. his wicked way this is he's to Ezekiel. save his life. He's telling Ezekiel, you, you better tell him what getting ready to happen. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity. So Sverikon used that in his press conference to let you know his vision is real. It's coming from God. And if you don't, you see, I'm, I'm telling you, and if you don't listen, you're going to die. You're gonna die. No, you're going to die in your wickedness. Use the wrong text. Come on. But his blood will I require at thine hand. Right. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, uh -huh. and he turn not from his wickedness, uh -huh. nor from his wicked way, uh -huh. he shall die in his iniquity. Did Farrakhan warn anybody from their wickedness? 
He just said he had a dream and he went on a mother's a, a, a ship and then he went on a bigger ship and then he went to the motherland. What warning did he give anybody? It was a warning, if you see the entire video. It was for uh, President Reagan and uh, I believe it's Gaddafi, Omar Gaddafi. Am I right? Okay, it was a warning that they won't meet and they're going to start some type of war or something like that. But I'm not here to talk about it. I'm just here to talk about his Ezekiel vision. Amen? Amen. You read the verse 21? No, not yet. Come on, finish me off. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness. Oh, wait, when a righteous man do what? Turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity. And I lay a, and I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Wow. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man uh -huh. that the righteous not, sin not, uh -huh. and he doth not sin, uh -huh. he shall surely live. He shall do what? Surely live. So if if, if Furkan warned the righteous, which he's not, about his wicked ways, which he, he will not. How could he want anybody in the wicked ways when he's wicked? He would say, well, you're judging him. Yes, I am judging him because of his words. He judge a man according to his words. If he's calling people pigs and this and that, then you judge him according to his words. People looking at me like, no, he's touchable. He's just like I am flesh. He's touchable. You judge him according to, just like me, you judge me according to my word. All right? That determines my character. All right? So if you're going to warn the righteous, who is he warning? Anyone who the righteous, he was just trying to justify his dream by using the Bible text. Bad, bad, bad thing. Don't do that. Because you don't know what the future may hold. In the name of Jesus. All right, God is good all the time. When the spirit of God is not in you, you will be led by a familiar spirit instead. The Holy Spirit is not in Mr. Farrakhan until he repent, bend his knee, accept the Lord Savior Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the Father. You don't like that word because you don't believe that the begotten, but it is Jesus. It is not the Isa that's in the Quran. It is the Jesus that's in the Bible. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Did you hear what I just said? Every knee shall bow. You want, I want to say something I'm going to rock your world right now. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. As long as a demon got a tongue, he's going to confess what they do. They got a tongue. They got a spiritual tongue. You're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Everybody going to bend their knee. They know one way, I mean, all uh, uh, many ways to God. There's only one way, Jesus. And that's the only one you're going to see. Amen. Okay, the Father gave all judgment to him. Amen. And the only time you may, you're going to see the Father is when you go to the New Jerusalem. But anytime you go before the white throne judgment of, uh, uh, of God, you're going to see the Son. He's the one that died. Not the Father, the Son. So he gave all judgment. The Bible said the father judged no man. But he gave all judgment to the son. The very one he rejects is the very one he's going to have to bow his knee to. I won't leave Ezekiel alone for right now. Because in Ezekiel, Christ is there. But he's not yet known as Christ. i get you that next time. Come on, my brother. When the spirit of God is not in you. You will be led by a familiar spirit instead. Uh huh. First Samuel chapter twenty-eight verses one through seven, which means a false spirit, a spirit that follows you, a generational spirit. Come on. And it came to pass in those days that the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare uh -huh. to fight with Israel. Uh huh. And Achish said unto David, Know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle, thou and thy men. And David said to Achish. Surely thou shalt know what thy servants can do. And Achish said to David, 
Therefore will I make thee keeper of mine head forever. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together, and came and pitched in Shemen. And Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly trembled. He was what? He was afraid. Remember that. And his heart greatly trembled. When the spirit of God inside of you, not inside of you anymore, leading you anymore, you're going to be what? Afraid, and your heart is going to be greatly trembled. That's how hell is like when God is not there. Remember what you just read. Come on. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, Woo. nor by Urim, Woo. nor by prophets. Woo. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, yes, sir. that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Uh-huh. Wow. He put him away and then he went looking back for him, right? I don't blame my boy Saul. <laughs> See, Saul, what happened with Saul? If you don't know the story, go home and read it. Saul didn't listen to Samuel. Samuel said, kill everyone, including the king. They went and dealt with a nation that God said, get rid of them. He kept the animals, some of them, and he kept the king alive. See, the problem with God, and you guys better listen to this. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He figured by appeasing God. He didn't obey God. By appeasing God, God be okay with him. See, God is not for junk. Not the God we serve. He said, obedience is better than sacrifice, Saul. So now guess what happened? Guess what's going to happen to you? I, God, Yahweh, reject you as king. So since I reject you as king, I no longer walk with you, talk with you, and my anointing is not felt in you. So you by yourself. Obedience. So that's what happened to him. He was rejected by God for being king over Israel. See, the Lord stopped communicating with Saul for what? Disobedience. So if you don't hear God, check your disobedience self. All right. I'll be honest. If you're fearful, that means that you are in disobedient. But Pastor, I read my Bible last night. God ain't looking at what you read. He's looking at how you behave. Amen. That was just an extra. Saul, out of desperation, Saul... He consulted a spiritist. See, when you have the spirit of God, see, Mr. Farrakhan had the spirit of God. So I believe when he went to the Puzzlin and he climbed that so-called mountain, that mountain is where they do human sacrifice. <laughs> Why would you climb a mountain several times, he says, right? <laughs> to do what? Why would you go to a place that practice Human used to practice human sacrifice. I said used to. I don't know if they still. Oh. I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> but just he admitted that he went up the mountain several times to do what? To, to, to enjoy the view. You don't. This is, let me tell you something. You don't go to a mountain. The Bible calls it a high place. Amen. Anyway. You got to bring the high place down. That's where worship of Satan is at. That's where the worship of demons and pagan ritual is at. Why would you go to a place, a high place, where they do human sacrifice? Are you looking to hear something, Mr. Farrakhan? You could have received that in the mosque. That vision. See, but see, too, see you got to understand one thing. When you're dealing with witchcraft, when you're dealing with divination, you need a high place. You need something that Satan is already baptized. 
That's what happened with Nimrod. When he was creating the mountain, the, 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 the Tower of Babel, he was creating a high place. That's why God don't like pillars. Leave that one alone. He was creating a high place to do what? To worship celestial beings. Why would you go there several times, Mr. Farrakhan? It's not in the Quran that you must go to a strange place and inquire of Allah. Wow. You're making me believe you're not a Muslim. You might be an Aztec, Mayan worshiper, a Quetzalcoatl. Wow. Someone said, wow. Well, anyway, let me move on. See, the witch of Indor. At Indor, the devil took on the likeness of the prophet called familiar spirit. I can't get too deep into that. He took the form of, of, of Samuel, the priest prophet. Because Samuel was a priest prophet. You go home, you study it. So, inquire of the witch of Indor. See, when you're dealing with witches, there's a spirit that goes with them. It is in the book of, of, of Genesis, chapter 3, I believe, where the serpent spoke to Eve. That's Python. Right? In the Greek understanding of it, it's Pythia. She had a Python spirit, a spirit of deception. Go back to the Garden of Eden, you'll see what that Python means, a Pythos. So when he went to that woman, he was dealing with an enchanter. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So Saul inquired of the Pythian, or the woman who can channel spirits. What was the Pythian known for? Check this out. Pythia was highly regarded for channeling through, through dreams like trance. You hear what I say? Channeling through dream like chance, trance. Prophecy. And give prophecy. Remember this dream. He went into a spaceship. Star Trek. Beam me up Scotty. And it's the small craft took him to the mother craft. And the mother craft took him to the the planet. I don't know what, whatever. That didn't happen to Ezekiel. When Ezekiel received the vision, Israel was in bondage. Israel was in captivity. And God was warning his people. So how in this world he going to use Ezekiel? I know it's happened in 1985. But it's called revision. <laughs> Remember what he said. Some going to believe or some not going to believe. Am I right? I don't believe. You should have never made that video. Whatsoever, whatsoever men so, so shall you be. Let's, let's move on. Hallelujah. See, the dark history of Farrakhan. Come on. The dark history of Farrakhan. The dark history of Farrakhan's vision. Uh -huh. the, this vision... Farrakhan claims to have occurred in Tepatzlan, Mexico. Tepatzlan, Mexico was known as Pueblo Magico. Pueblo Magico, that's Spanish. Which means magic town. Yes. Why would you go to a place that is known as Pueblo Magico? Why would you go to a place that is named for magic, incantation, shaman? Why would you go to a place called Pueblo Magico? Por qué? Que usa brujería. Which means you want to use witchcraft. Why would you go to a place called Pueblo Magico? Where you could go into your mosque. We don't know the mosque, they got some temple. And it's beautiful, I seen it. I seen a video. Just go to the altar and talk to God. Why would you go where you live at 
to go wait to a place to do human sacrifice and do channeling. To receive what? You see, I deceive the black people? And not only black people, they deceive all people who, who believe and trust and listen to him. That's a false tongue. In the name of Jesus. And we'll pick this up next week. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.